Here we're going to look at a nice one-sided limit involving an iterated floor function. So in particular, we want the limit as x goes to one-third from the right or from above of the floor of 1 over x times the floor of 1 over x. So to get started, we're going to do a bit of a change of variables here. And so that change of variables will involve setting y equal to 1 over x. So notice if x is approaching one third, then y is definitely going to approach three. So we can rewrite this as the limit as y approaches three. We'll talk about if that's above or below in just a second of the floor of y times the floor of y. So we still have iterated floor functions, but we no longer have reciprocals. We're no longer working with fractions. But now let's look at this. So as x approaches one third from above, y will approach three from below. And so why is that? Well, let's think about numbers that are larger than one third. So like one half would be larger than one third. And so if x is equal to one half, then that tells us that y is equal to two, which is less than three. Likewise, we could go even closer. Let's say x is equal to, well, what's just a bit bigger than one third? Maybe two fifths. So two fifths is to the right of one third, but that corresponds to y equals five halves, which is again, less than three. So that's a little hand wavy, but we're gonna do things really careful for the rest of this. So I think it's kind of okay to hand wave our fact that that limit from above turns into a limit from below. But like I said, we still have an iterated floor function, so there's still quite a bit to do here. And this may be a class of limits where it's easiest to use the formal definition. So maybe let's recall the formal definition of a limit and get it on the board. Okay, so I've got my proper definition of a limit on the board. So I used y as my variable because that's what I've got going on here. So let's recall that the limit as y goes to a of f of y equals l if for every epsilon bigger than zero, there is a delta bigger than zero such that if y minus a is between negative delta and delta, then the absolute value of f of y minus l is less than epsilon. Now this compound inequality is generally written as an inequality involving an absolute value, but I wrote it this equivalent way using a compound inequality because that allows us to manipulate this definition, which is for a two-sided limit, into a definition for a one-sided limit. So if we want y to approach three from below, or in general, if we want y to approach a from below, then that means we're really only interested in the y values that are smaller than a. But if y is smaller than a, then this difference will be negative. And so we can pin this not between negative delta and delta, but between negative delta and zero. And that's a quick way of changing the standard definition to a one-sided definition. And there's even a more natural way of rewriting this inequality, and that's by adding a to all parts of that. So if we add a to all parts of that, we'll have a minus delta is less than y, which is less than a. So now y is pinned between a minus delta and a. Okay, good. So now let's explore this a little bit before we look at a precise solution. So let's maybe start with the following observation. So if our delta is less than one, then let's just rewrite that with our a value of three. We have three minus delta is less than y, which is less than three. But we can put on the side of this two. So that means y is between two and three, which tells us that the floor of y is equal to two. But that tells us that the floor of y times the floor of y is equal to the floor of two times y. But now if delta is less than one, but maybe bigger than one half, it might be hard to get a handle on what's going on here. So let's maybe notice that if further delta is less than one half, 
then this inequality turns into five halves is less than y, which is strictly less than three. But now we can multiply all parts of that by two, and we'll see that five is less than two y, which is less than six. And then we can take the floor of that. So the floor of two y is equal to five. So it seems like the answer here is five. And notice we're able to get the floor of this two y equals five for any value of delta less than a half. Now let's notice that for any value of epsilon, no matter how small it is, as long as we take delta to be less than a half, it can actually be less than or equal to a half because we have this strict inequality right here. We achieve the floor of 2y equal to 5. Okay, so again, that gives us a motivation that we can probably take delta to be a half as we write up this final solution. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so on the last board, we motivated that our limit was equal to five. And so we're gonna prove that as this claim right here. So let's do it the proper way. So let's say we are given epsilon bigger than zero. And this is arbitrarily chosen to be bigger than or equal to zero. Let's take delta to be, well, generally it's something in terms of epsilon, but as we saw via our calculations on the last board, we could take delta to be equal to one half. And then taking delta equal to one half, let's suppose that y satisfies this inequality right here. So in other words, y is between three minus a half and three, which can easily be rewritten as five over two and three. So we have five over two is less than y, which is less than three. And then while we're at it, because we know that we'll need it for later, Observe that this implies that five is less than two times y, which is less than three. Okay, nice. And now we're ready to calculate this inequality right here. So let's look at the absolute value of the floor of y times the floor of y minus five. So we would like this to be less than epsilon. Okay, so we can work from the inside to the outside. So notice this is going to be the absolute value of the floor of 2y minus 5. And that's because we're able to simplify this using the fact that the floor of y is 2 because we can put a 2 over on the left-hand side of this 5 halves. Great. And then we can say that this is going to be equal to the absolute value of five minus five. And that is because the floor of two y equals five from this inequality right here. Okay, but now five minus five is equal to zero. But then since epsilon was chosen to be anything bigger than zero, that's most definitely less than epsilon which is exactly the condition that we needed for this limit to exist. So let's look really carefully at what we did. Given an arbitrary epsilon bigger than zero, we took a value of delta, and then we saw that assuming y lived within this appropriate range, f of y minus the value of the limit was less than epsilon. So that follows exactly what we needed over here, and that's a good place to stop.